Oh, good evening, all you macho, paranoid, gentle sirs and nice girls on the internet. <laughs> my, my ladies. My ladies. We're, we're here to uh, talk about the kitsch and sentimentality. Um, and well, to do that, we took two essays from Robert Salmon, philosopher I love very much, Robert Salmon's book, In Defense of Sentimentality. And the two essays we chose this time were In Defense of Sentimentality and On Kitsch and Sentimentality. And both of them are kind of long defenses of kitsch. And this fits, folds right into what we talked about last week, uh, Kundera, who is very unapologetically against kitsch. He actually, in the Unbearable Lightness of Being, he kind of suggested kitsch was the beginning of totalitarianism. Yeah, he, he almost suggested that that was the root of every political problem we have. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of kitsch getting out of control or something. Kind of a distorted vision of reality itself. Yeah. yeah. A, a reality that scrapes away the, unhe uh, the, uh, the unseemly parts and puts on a happy face for the world. Yeah. So... Um... We didn't we didn't talk about that so much last time, but so I thought it'd be good to get into it more. I mean, it's an interesting point, and uh, just to start things off, I have to say I just want to say like uh, I I was quite a bit uh, just instinctively I'm with Kundera actually <laughs> Kitsch uh, Kitsch I'm not a big fan of Kitsch. Um, and it kind of makes me gag a little bit, like living, living in Japan. Uh, sometimes it feels like kitsch is even more pushed around. Like you can even see kitsch, even like um, I think you can even see things like the news. Um, just to give you an example, I you know I just yesterday or the day before yesterday on the news. And maybe this will give you a feeling about what I think is kitsch too, because this is open to interpretation to what is kitsch. But like I don't know, just just it's to me it's kind of things like this. E even on like the news, like on the news the other day, there was this girl who came to Japan from America. She's this little seven-year-old girl. Her name is Piper, and um, she in a, she loves Japan apparently. I don't know. I, I I didn't catch the beginning of the story, but she super loves Japan. And she in America she studied Japanese. Or with some Japanese kids or something. I she can actually for she for seven years old. She's really good at speaking Japanese, and they so they brought her in, asked her a couple questions, and you know, good old Piper, Nihon Daisuke, right? Uh, and uh, so they went. Well, of course, what did oh, they boy. do? <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Oh you can God, I'm already, I'm already afraid. I know, right? You, you can see where this is going. Of course, they took little Piper Chan out to Fukushima. Right. Oh no. Uh, and I mean, okay, she was doing good. I'm not. I'm not going to say anything bad about Piper. She's a nice girl. I really think. But like, this is what they did on the news, right? They're like, okay, so okay, she was giving gifts, gifts uh, to I like candy. She likes like American candy. She likes to ki the kids in Fukushima, which is a nice thing to do. But like, there they stick her over. They throw her over in Fukushima over there, and then the news crew insists on getting a shot of her and her sister looking out over the devastation in Fukushima and they want they kind of zoom in as they they're explaining the devastation to see if Piper Chan will <sighs> have a little tear in her eye come down and then you know it, they get her close but they can't quite get her all the way so you can t they they do a back shot of her and her sister like kind of shoulder and shoulder and then they ask her later in Japanese and she was like you know something like kanashikata like and you know the whole story is kind of like oh little Piper Chan she went to Fukushima and her little innocent heart was broken by the devastation in Fukushima, right? And it, this, this, I mean, okay, for me, this is kind of what we're talking about. This, this kind of fits in the zone of what we're talking about. This is a, a sentimental sweet, sweet kitsch or yeah. whatever. Like, and I'm sorry to do this. I don't want to make a direct comparison between this kind of stuff and North Korea, but I'll do it. <laughs> like... I'm sorry. I mean, because, like, you know, he brings it up, uh, Kudera brings it up in the context of totalitarian states. Mm. But, I mean, this this runs rampant in all of Asia, I'm sorry to say. And, like, whenever you see a North Korean broadcast 
the first thing they do is they bring out those little girls mm -hmm. singing triumphantly for their glorious leader, swinging their placards up and down. It's 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 they have this vision of a sweet the sweetness of little girls and childhood and innocence, and they just cynically use it to prop up that regime. You could see right in their propaganda, they're always marching them up and down. And they use cynically use women too a lot mm. as, as symbols of purity, virtue, uh, to, to, to show how great the regime is. And, and that's a kind of an extreme case. But I mean, you can see how that idea seeps around to other places here. This is what, okay, I, I can't roll my eyes back far enough to express the disgust I see with these things. And then, you know, you start to be like, oh, it's Jesus. And then, you know, you start to see the nudes here sometimes, and they're doing kind of the same. No, they're not doing the same thing. That's ridiculous. They're not propping up a dictatorship. I mean, it's ridiculous to say, but, that you know, they're going to have, for some reason, during the weather report, they're going to have a little girl there. Yes. To, yeah, to shout, yeah, to shout yeah. the weather out, you know, yeah. little Hana-chan or something. How is she doing today in the hot summer sun? Uh, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, just something goofy like Even that. Even stuff yeah. like, uh, like on um, Honkoa. Yes. Honkoa, like, like in that. the background, like they have all the little kids listening to the scary stories. And then when it finishes, they switch back to the shot of all the kids so they're kind of like, <gasps> right you're supposed to look at the little kids who heard the scary story and <sighs> I feel how cute it is or kind of vicariously enjoy it with them um, I guess yeah I mean that, that, that feeling that I guess Kundera had when he was living in a communist regime and the feeling I, 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 I for some reason I feel with them you're like when I, I just can't it gags me sometimes see these kind of stories that, you know, like they'll run a five minute story uh, about something sad that happens on the news and they, they zoom back and they zoom right back to the, one of the female commentators and they zoom right up to her crying, right? Just immediately, yeah. kind of like, yeah, this is the time when sprockets when you cry, okay? I mean, like they got this down to a science and it's always kind of like these kind of sweet, I don't know, memories and, and sad sentimental feelings that and, and it, it's only like a little five minute thing and they've already got people on the stage crying they got their tears ready all planned and ready and my brain is screaming fake it's all fake and, yeah. and then i'm also like and i'm screaming in my heart like and the kind of person that would buy into this you're fake too you're a fake person how can anyone be like this this is ridiculous and yes, that's where I start putting on my fedora and tipping some of <laughs> Wait, is that, is that paranoid machismo? I yeah, mean? That, that just might be a little bit of paranoid machismo. I, I'm only than willing to admit that that's in me. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, this essay taught me that, is that like my, my reaction to this, and I, nothing, can, nothing can change this now, I mm. think, that my initial gut reaction to some of this, it, it's, it's, it's classist. It, it's 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 machismo. It's it's this worship of strength and power, and, and maybe even a little bit of an addiction to anger. I think. In a mm, like, yeah. Like our our love of comeuppance and, and mm -hmm. you got to come into you kind of like I don't know Judge Judy style of program where you know where I'm hating on these people who are getting sentimental about I don't know some little girl reuniting with her family. Whereas, you know, I love to see Judge Judy just talk some poor person down. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. yeah, I know. Like, I have to say, this is something that I, I have the same feeling as you. And I, this is something I really had to deal with in this essay. It's what really hit me in the gut because, I mean, Solomon's going to come right back and give that left hook to the face and say, like, look, you know, here you are, you know, watching your programs all about anger. And you think, oh, yeah, you tell him, giving him the truth, the truth bill. Right. And then um, because it's anger and I guess that's truth. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you're, you, could, you couldn't you say we have an anger kitsch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I it, this is where it gets really strange where you start to where where does kitsch end? Where does it begin? But you could you could at some point you could almost like redefine anger back into kitsch the amount we have here uh, and how it just becomes just, you know, another decoration, uh, very flat, just a anger. Kind of a one note simple thing. Right? Yeah. I mean the very things we accuse these 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 sickly sweet kind of precious moments dolls of being you know, these, these and ultimately like Solomon, you know, kind of just admits 
point that like, well, kitsch does exist in the sense that they're easy. It's just an easy grab at an emotion, right? It's mm -hmm. not complicated. It's unambiguous and uncomplicated. So as art, we can still, and I will say that it's not good art generally. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, half of my disgust is wrapped up in this kind of pseudo intellectual, well, that's just bad art, yeah, but right. most, but most of it is just a pure disgust at tears in mm -hmm. under five minutes, like record breaking tear speed. Whereas I'm more than willing to judge a stranger. I don't know. I judge Judy in about two minutes. Yeah. 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 Um, like, or, yeah. You, you suck. <laughs> I was even, as I was reading this, I was even thinking about like, as far as like quote unquote easy emotions. I mean, and again, this is bad art, but like a horror movie that's just all jump scares. You know what I mean? Like uh, that's probably that's not a good horror movie. It, it 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 doesn't really. I think it's not complex enough to be an aesthetically good horror movie. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm not kind of like, yeah, damn you, people who are freaked up by ho uh, jump scares. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just an easy. That's another easy emotion. But I don't really attack that emotion. Uh, I don't like you know pontificate on like the the possible totalitarian consequences of jump scares right <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah. jump scares I mean, is not the right metaphor I mean, but we, we will still say it's bad art but yeah. we don't hate the people like when, when it comes to sentimentalism i find myself actually disliking oh, the people me, me too and, me too i find myself thinking like what kind of person would watch this and get enjoyment out of it yeah uh, like I, just, I, I find myself saying a dumb person yeah, a silly person, a trivial person. Yeah, I, I, me too. That's why I meet. Uh, I kind of sitting here. I'm sitting here thinking, what kind of idiot would think this? What kind of idiot would believe this? I mean, if you believe it, you're kind of an idiot. And if you, if you, uh, if you're actively, if if you're enjoying it, it, it must maybe it, it means that you kind of you have this need in you to feel good like you you have this like good feeling good addiction and you, i must kind of start like putting you in with groups of people who discriminate like and who are who who are like racist and stuff and they like you know like you know like in the american south i'm sure people didn't stand around looking at pictures of slaves being uh tortured all day right they're just kind of like oh yuck here's the happy southern family right and everything's okay and the slave over there he's okay too what a wonderful yeah. day you know what i mean like yeah. I, my, my mind starts compartmentalizing you in with these people who are yeah. willing to ignore larger more important issues just to, just to get a good a hit of that that good stuff that really good feeling stuff right i mean like the person in the 50s that's just i don't know tripping out to having a great time watching leave it to beaver when you know full well, like my instinct is say, but you know full well this isn't the truth. You, you're you're sitting there having these happy, teary, funny, family fun feelings, when at the same time you're just you know segregating and being awful to an entire race and classes of people, and and, and even women at the time too, right? I mean, like it's just there's an entire subgroup, not even subgroup, like most of society is being suppressed and, and their rights taken away in, in very evil ways. And because you know, you're like, well, you're sitting there, you know, and you're feeling good about this time. And mm. like, I was kind of, I, my, my initial reaction is like, well, someone who's feeling good about it is basically supporting this regime. It kind yeah. of feels like support of the current established regime. Like any, any sweet sentimental tale about the times we have now feels like an inherent kind of admission of supporting the, the, the present times. Mm. I, it's totally, and you know, I, 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 and this is where my, my, I, I understand like after reading this essay and, and you know, I, I, I liked it very much, but, and, and, and talking through with a lot of people, even talking through with my wife after watching little Piper John on, on TV oh, and God. talking about this and like, I'm drawing out all these things from seeing little, little Piper Chan on TV. And I'm kind of like saying like, yeah, like somebody who wants to see Piper Chan cry about Fukushima, you know, is somebody who all they want to do is just feel good about themselves. And they, they don't want to see anything bad about the world. They, they just maintain the status quo. They don't want anything to change. So they just look at pretty things only, pretty things only, pretty things only. So that means they never, have to see any of the ugly in the world and ever have to challenge themselves and then that way they can convince themselves you know that they also too crying with little piper chan that they are innocent in themselves too and then they're good little people too because they were able to resonate with little piper chan yeah. once right. that ball starts rolling 
Yeah, I know. Once it, like every single objection Solomon addresses, I hit. Like I just like it's like a pinball machine. I hit every single one back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, but he Solomon in these two essays, he addresses every single one of these. Um, yeah, oh boy, I I, I can't uh, I can't say how much I feel for Kundera and the people that hate kids. That's kind of basically I, I get it. I, I yeah. Don't. Right, um, and I guess if we want to touch a little bit on the the the, the, uh, the meat, as it were, of this essay, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, basically, Solomon says that there are six objections to kitsch, and in a sense, sentimental, sweet, sweet kitsch. Mm -hmm. um, and there, one is that it creates excessive emotion. Mm -hmm. Two, it manipulates your emotion. Three, it's a faked emotion. For its easy, cheap, superficial emotion. Five, it's self indulgent. And six, that it distorts our vision of the world, right? And all of these are kind of, you know, Kundera is hitting this one. I think Kundera is maybe, at least the feeling I got was that he's most interested in the fact that it distorts our vision of the world. Yeah. In other words, he was obsessed with the idea of people eliminating basically what he'd call what the shit from the world, right? Yeah. People yeah. that can't that take the point. ugly in the world so they eliminate it with kitsch he does he is also he he traipses into self-indulgence though i think yeah, um yes, i yes. mean the second this, tier yeah this is the second tier and like it fits i think if it's really in well with the story robert solomon gives some people who kind of hate on sentimentality and kitsch they, they give the story of rudolf hess the nazi uh, who you know watched a a, an opera or a play given by condemned Jewish prisoners during the Holocaust. And here he is like weeping, weeping about the play while he's watching, you know, people condemned to death perform it in front of him. And, you know, that's supposed to be an example of how, how just self deluded, how self indulgent this is. Here you are getting off on how good a person you are for weeping at the opera. while I, these people are condemned to death. Well, something else is going, something really awful. Right. I mean, like, it really is a kind of even I, I get it myself too. It's a kind of feeling is how how dare you feel good about the world when you obviously know that what you are part of a regime that's bad. Yeah. Um, like it, could there kind of I know he has this feeling because he says in his book what is it is a direct quote is kitsch has its source in the categorical agreement with being, mm. which is just a fancy way of saying um, and it was good. Right, yeah. kitsch is a belief that the world is a great place, oh, yeah, and um, he finds that problematic. Um, and there is a way that it can be problematic, yeah. but maybe not this, the the there's there's a weaker way that it can be problematic, but not the strong way that, at least as far as I can see now after reading Solomon's essay, the strong way he means it can't be true. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's just there's going to be no way that you can convict these emotions themselves alone uh, of being the cause of any one of these things. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, please. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Each each one of these. I mean, I I don't know if we want to go through every single one of these, but e each one of them is listed and, and like the common ways they're expressed and, and his reply to each one is listed. I just want to ask like, is there any particular one that you, I, I mean, like I said, like you both said, like we, I kind of pinball across all of them, yeah. but is, is there any particular one that you felt as you were reading most attracted to Mo um, most you were, you were kind of coming to grips with? Uh, it was for me, it was the number one that it distorts the world. Definitely, mm. I'm so there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, it just it makes me vomit in my mouth when I see it. Yeah. But I don't know why I have that reaction. I, I don't know because anyway, we can talk about why that's. It's, should we talk about the? Well, look at that one. It's distortion of the world, mm -hmm. and that it's cheap and easy. Ah, the classist one. Nice. The class. I find myself coming back to those more and a lot of the time and sometimes I'll fall into the manipulation uh, but a lot of it has to do with distortion and cheapness mm, um, I know that other people are gonna fall more into the self-indulgent mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of people are gonna feel that one um, what, what did you think was 
Wait, what do you feel most of the time when you see um, that? So, okay, I was with Distortion uh, is big. And I would actually, after going through these a bunch of times, after reading the essay a couple of times, and, and kind of detailing out the arguments, I, you know, and, and, and just putting the book down and thinking about, like, what comes to me when I see this stuff. Um, surprising. And I was surprised about this. Self-indulgence came up just immediately when I when I put down the book and I just started listing objections. This this kind of self, it's like a self-deceptive self-indulgence. It, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a kind of wanting not to see the world the way it is. Right, uh, but but it also it, it feels good because it feels good not to see it that way. Um. Yeah, I mean, like these 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 blend together because when I, I say know. it distorts our vision of the world, I mean that blends into the manipulation, doesn't it? Yes. Right. Like in other words, there's a bunch of people sitting at the top of the food chain that want the status quo to be, so they mm. have these sentimental sops come on TV and cry about the stupidest crap. And everyone starts to become these kind of, I don't know, like, like it's some kind of like my, my conspiracy theory in my mind is like, <laughs> like it's like Plato, like, and then they put these actors on the screen and are like weeping. And then my soul is, is pulled in the wrong direction towards desire or something. And I think be, I become a weeping, stupid sop myself. And, and then, you know, I'm subjected to this cheap, superficial, I become a cheap and superficial person. But all that is, you're right, it all blends into self-indulgence. Like, oh, these are just... They're so mixed together, right? Each mm -hmm. one leads to the next one. Each one fills in the gaps left by the other one. I mean, it feels like, honestly, when you really, really start thinking about these, all these objections, they break down into two categories, which is uh, there's a moral objection mm -hmm. and, and an and a, and a authenticity objection, right? There's mm -hmm. a moral direction that you're distorting the world and you're not telling it how it, it or, or you're even manipulating people. And there's an authentic, authenticity one is in like, you can't possibly feel like that. This isn't real. Something's being faked, right? I mean, mm. both these are, these are even mixed together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it feels I, like Plato is here too. It really kind of does. I, I like I like that. You know, like you know, I spend a lot of time sitting there thinking because I really have to wrestle with these essays. I mean, I like Robert Tillman a lot. He's one of my favorite. He he's one of my favorite philosophers. But I'm just 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 inclined against this um yeah i found myself sitting there thinking about things like you know well maybe what about like what <laughs> what about like the charge of like, like like if i turn on tv and i see you know like oh my god like i'm sure you know this living in japan when you turn on youtube on your ipad or whatever and you get those stupid suntory oh the so suntory ads for uh, beer or um What's the other one? Is it? It's not. Uh, Rolachan does it's, the it's whiskey. The, the, the Jim the, Beam. Jim Beam. Jim Beam. Yeah, she has Jim Beam, right? But those are, I guess, those are less. Those are less uh, Rola, Rola's fine. Yeah. Better. Better. But but the ones where they do with beer and yeah. whiskey, I think. I think it's whiskey. Um, those those just make me want to throw up. Like I literally, I take like I take my earphones out of my ears so I don't have to listen to them, and I I I turn I it away. Yeah, I, I just cannot, I cannot bear looking at them. And, you know, I'm sure if you just go on YouTube, you can find them. It, it's not like, it's not like they're showing humans getting mutilated or gunned down or something or little no. children being chopped up. I mean, the way I'm talking about it, it sounds like someone's being brutally murdered. But no, no, it's, it's, it's just this, they always, they find this like cute little, this cute, not little girl, this cute girl, like this cute kind of attractive girl. Yeah, but like... She, she, there's, of course, yeah. they don't like emphasize her sexuality. They emphasize no, no. her kind of like purity. Good, purity, her goodness of spirit. And here she is, like, drinking a beer and like she just innocently enjoying the beer, right? Innocently enjoying being with you. And like yeah. you kind of, you, you feel like you're supposed to feel like if you walk home and you open the door and you saw her there, she is just as refreshing as the beer, right? Yeah, yeah. She's going to relieve you your, your the, the, the day, the stress of the day, just as much as that beer is. And yeah. it, it's, it's, it's maddening these commercials because they come on all the time. Uh, and these, these commercials really, really, really get to me like I, I find myself 
trying to twist my logic to find some way to hate these commercials uh, because I, mean, I cannot it, stand them. But they're bad is, art. They're bad it is art. Fakery. It is fakery in the sense that it's, it's manipulation in the sense that they're trying to they're trying to associate those feelings yeah, with the with story the, of the product. Yeah, which, which really I'm. But the, yeah. see, the thing is, I'm but, but not that's getting not what I'm, that's about not what the commercialism. I'm yeah, but, right. But that's the real objection. But that's not why I'm turning off volume. Exactly right. You know, like, I can't stand this distorted, stupid vision of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, I was sitting there thinking because, like, in Japan, I guess more more often than not, you'll see commercials on this side of things, cutesy side of things, kitschy maybe. Then you will see things on on the sexy side of things, like which where you would see what you would see in the states, yeah. right? And I find myself, I don't know, I find myself thinking like, I don't know. Sometimes I sit, I'm staring at these <laughs> suntory ads. They're just like destroying my brain, and I'm sitting there thinking like, this is worse than anything. This is this is this is like this is the truly thing that's gonna ha. Oh, wow. This is this is what's really gonna harm women, and here I am looking out for women. <laughs> it's these it's these damn Suntory ads, <laughs> showing them enjoying beer innocently, because you know that's that's what's gonna do it. But you know, these ads are driving, they're driving me insane. What can I say? I I, I gotta be honest here. Uh, I know that's exactly how I feel. I mean, and like. I mean, like, to be honest, I mean, like, if we're going to be more honest, I feel like Japan itself has a problem with that. In that but I mean, like, so this is where, uh, I don't know if we want to take it here so much right away, but why not? I mean, I mean ultimately, when you start looking at these feelings, I mean, you, you just can't simply blame someone for wanting to enjoy a pure, innocent moment with uh, uh, somebody that's, that's just cute and nice and awesome or something, yeah. right? I mean, like, it, there's no legitimate critique you can make of that without making you look like some kind of, I don't know, psychopath or weirdo or macho, yeah, I yeah. don't know, crazy man. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, the only critique that works is that it's it's what's driving i think what's driving partially driving you insane is the sheer volume yeah right i mean that's really the only thing i can say at this point now uh that it's the fact that there's a, a focus the, the focus on the whole right yeah. you know what i mean of course this isn't really popping to my head is the suntory ads are coming on but like i'm hoping right i don't know after looking at this after reading these essays i was thinking about them for a while i i'm getting a little bit more generous about the whole thing um trying to be anyway I, I hope slowly I can be a little bit more except I can work myself out of my macho paranoia um, but like I, mean, I did find myself sitting there thinking things like you know well you know what about innocence maybe maybe the problem like innocence like somebody's not partially innocent they're like totally innocent so but like somebody could be partially angry and it leaves them open to deeper structures whereas innocence Innocence is something that's like a whole package. That's why it's okay to hate it because that's a real lie. Whereas anger is not as much a lie. But I don't know. Like it's all it's all me just trying to find a way to hate these stupid kitschy ads I see on TV all the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, you, you can there can even be a moment of innocence in a certain way. Exactly right. Suppose, right? Yeah, it's not necessarily. As long as you don't, you know, think that it's continuing forever, you find it everywhere. I mean, that's the problem. The only problem is, I mean, like, ultimately, when you start thinking about it, at least I started thinking about it this way, that, I mean, like, it's so hard to define kitsch. But if you start thinking of it as, like, I started thinking of it in the way of some kind of tropes, almost. It's almost mm. tropey in a certain way, like... Hey, like, distorted ideas. Right, yeah, they're distorted ideas, but they're just kind of quick, quick, like, I don't know... Uh, Quick signals or signs. Tramways of thought. The tramways of thought. Uh, where have I heard that before? Um, to, to, to other things, right? That's why it's, it's kind of a cheap, easy kind of trip to Happy Town or whatever. But I guess the problem being is that, that sentimentality, why does sentimentality get, get all the blame for this, right? When, yeah. when it's obviously happening, it's so obviously happening uh, other ways in America, I mean, with like gritty movies or anger music or grunge or anything, that's all just a bunch of anger tropes. Um, or you know, just look at TV. I mean, like when they put like I don't know, these reality shows, and they'll find someone for you to hate, and yeah. they'll just be the most stereotypical person too. Oh, this this kind of bitchy rich woman, or they got mm -hmm. that look at her on there. This kind of arrogant man, this arrogant old man. They got their tropes. They got their fast tracks to thought for every emotion and it's not just um 
I don't know, weepy, weepy kind of sentimentality. Yeah. And the worst part is like when I see those, like maybe I don't like them, but I'm not sitting there thinking like the people who are enjoying this are secret dictators. Yeah. Yeah. Or hating on them are evil people. In a certain yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm going to just go going that far or something. I don't know. What did you think about this? I don't know if this is kind of getting kind of in a weird way, but I just started to think like, why is it that I ended up this way? Now I, I know that you could tell lots of interesting different theories. I mean, it's definitely that we grew up in the United States, which is mm -hmm. uh, the, the dominant culture. I, I, I don't think it's exaggerating to say it's very, how can I say this, masculine. It's, it's, it's got power fantasies and, and masculinity and, you know, you have to be tough and strong and big and powerful and the world is a dangerous place and you got to protect yourself. That's why you need guns. And, you know, being cool is where it's at and cool doesn't mean weak it means powerful and in your face and dominating and controlling and domineering i mean that's just kind of a, a culture we grew up in all there's all that but maybe i mean maybe this all kind of starts from a place of like uh the world is kind of a bad place uh, mm. kind of thought right like um you have to be tough enough yeah you know I mean? like you know Th you, this you is a lesson, yeah you can't be wissified yeah, you're, yeah, becoming, yeah. you're becoming wissified if yeah, yeah, you yeah. start to believe in tenderness and the world isn't wussy, so you can't be wussy either. You've got to be tough enough and man enough to deal with a tough and evil world. Mm -hmm. um, kind and then of like, like, yeah, right. Oh yeah, totally. Like, and then, you know, it, it's then, then like if you're, if you're too, if you're too weak to deal with the, the, you know, the gritty reality of things, then, you know, you, you start, you start messing things up for the rest of us. You weaklings. Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> hey, hatred of the weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Power yeah. fantasies. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> which, when you think about it, that's really not very Christian. Hmm. <laughs> but then, then again, our power fantasies and our power worship, our cultural worship of power and domination has never been. I don't know. It seems a very strange mix with Christianity, but mm. I don't know. Christianity also has a doctrine of kind of saying, well, the world is kind of, or human nature is bad. Like, yeah. I mean, like when, when, a, when, or at least Christianity kind of starts out from the point of people are kind of bad. Yeah. And you have to beat the God into them, right? A yeah. little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas places in J like Japan, they start out from a perspective of people are good. Hmm. And they're kind of corrupted. They're slowly corrupted by everyone else around them. Um, and I don't know. I wonder if those fundamental starting points kind of show us how we got to where we are. Hmm. I, yeah, I think, I think it's definitely possible. I mean, if you think people are good, then kind of sentimental good feelings about people around you wouldn't be a weakness per se. It would be kind of seeing the world as it is. Mm. This, is, this is what you really are. These people, deep down, I mean, they have that word, word in Japanese, sunao, right? Mm. Right, sunao. But sunao is just a kind of a word for meaning, well, to be honest, it's kind of like obey. Yeah. Um, like when, when kids are kind of talking in class and the teacher says, be sunao, which means sincere. Be sincere or honest. What they really mean, what they mean by that is, well, if you are really being sincere to yourself, you would be listening to me. You'd be taking part in the group. You'd be part of us, right? Yeah. That's what you really want to be, is you really want to be part of the team, man. Um, mm. And, and it, it's, it's such a strange word to hear sometimes when you hear it the first time. You're like, well, because my first reaction is, well, he is being honest. He, he's being a jerk and talking in class. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, this is what he really wants. This is the honesty. But they take it as to be like, no, no, the real you is wants to be kind of part of it. Whereas, I don't know if it kind of feels like in America or the West, we, we have a vantage point of like the real you is the person that wants to break off and be separate. Yeah. Kind of the too cool for school, the individual little part of you. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. It kind of feels like a lot of this has to do with authenticity. And, you know, we want to say like, well, uh, you know, sentimentality and being nice and stuff like that, that's not really how it is that's not how people are and that's not how you should be mm. uh, you should be isolated and maybe a little bit aggressive and maybe even angry because that's good it's better to be angry and powerful than weak and wussy any day of the week right because that's really what's going on that's that's the gritty world that's the truth okay. yeah i mean you can't you're too weak to you know so you have to lie to yourself you can't look at the world the way it really is yeah. 
it's, it's, it's the kind of fantasy exists, right? You got to be strong enough to, to deal with the truth of the the, the bad world. Yeah, basically. I mean, it, it's and it, it, just as talking about this, I mean, it's not like I'm doubting this either per se, but like it seems like, I mean, the point Solomon seems to want to make is something along the lines of, you know, okay, fine, but now now you got to a point where you can't even accept a little bit mm -hmm. right? like that th this can't exist at all right yeah. just the very it's a very existence makes you gag and it kind of does. does for me it does for me i can't i don't want to look at it i don't want to see it i i i ugh, ugh. I mean, I, I, for example, I don't know, like, what do you think about this? And I started thinking about, like, so we came from this vantage point of a kind of, kind of a, a worship of machismo, as it were, or at least a, mm. a veiled worship of power uh, versus I wouldn't be too, I don't think I'm exaggerating too much to say that the East kind of has a worship of sentiment or they love sentiment. And not mm. only in Japan, in South Korea, in China, and, and it seems like, they're more willing to do that or more willing to display sentiment, at least as opposed to America. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'm being too broad here, uh, but, you know, it, it, so I started to think, well, you know, growing up in that culture that worships kind of gritty darkness and power and being a man and being an adult, like maybe one of the things that first fascinated us was seeing, for example, I don't know, there was you know, like Japanese, like even anime and stuff, I know when you first see it, it, it's kind of like, oh, like there's this whole other world of emotion mm -hmm. and, and and way of being that's for in that time, which is what in the 80s and the 90s was yeah. really kind of left untouched yeah. by our culture. It Don't was you remember like you look in like books and stuff like this? I mean, these are really oversimplified books, like, but like they say things like in J Japan is wet. Yeah, and America is dry. Dry, right? That's yeah, why you look that. at the an anime anime characters, and they they have they're all like kind of wet, right? They yeah. they have, they show emotion, right? Where is in the West they don't show emotion. I don't know. Right, this right. is really oversimplified it stuff, is, but quite over. I just kind of, I don't know. I want to kind of feel like if if that anime boom that happened in the early the late eighties, early nineties was filling in for kind of, I don't know, a gap. At least some of it was filling in for a gap that wasn't being, I don't know, filled by something else. I mean, but now, I mean, I don't know if it's weird to say. I think, like, for example, My Little Pony is filling that gap. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. There's I a mean, kind I mean, of honest sincerity about their kind of love of, I don't know, what is it, friendship? Um, but, I mean, there's something like that kind of stuff. Virtue yeah, with family and, and yeah. cuteness and... and I, I don't I don't know I don't know but I'm just this is kind of like just run with me here I, I kind of think that they dug into this they I mean in, in the creator Lauren Faust I mean but where did she get the inspiration for that she, well she's directly inspired by Sailor Moon Sailor, yeah. I mean like all of this is kind of seeped in through Japan this filling in of a gap that, that we had had for the longest time I don't know it kind of felt like that's what attracted us initially was that we had been eating, I don't know, only, you know, one, 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 an unbalanced meal. And when you do that for a long time, you begin to crave something else. You know, and this is kind of inter on this, along this line, this is somewhere kind of my thoughts went. And I was thinking, like, you know, all this talk we did in the beginning about how I just cannot stand, like, this, this cheesy kitsch that gets thrown in your face here. Like on the news and these Suntory ads or whatever. Like that being said, like, and I was thinking about this kind of wet and dry and anime, at least, you know, some, some, time, some, some, some of it showed, some of it. Not some of of it it. showed more emotion and stuff like, and that did attract me maybe, I think. And I didn't really have a big problem with that. I kind of enjoyed that. I thought it was good. You know what I mean? Like, so it's not like, yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't know some of part of me must be down with this yeah. to a certain extent. Part of me must be interested in this. See my lame attempt to save myself. Yes. <laughs> I thought a long time about how am I going to save myself? From this? Yeah, I know, right? From being this machismo power worshiper. And I, I just kind of feel like, you know, maybe, maybe we're the true Nietzsche's here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, all we want is a balanced diet. 
<laughs> I think maybe that's what everybody kind of wants in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I agree. I think uh, we we need you on Solomon's side. Maybe we do need that. And maybe it does kind of fulfill you. It gives you more a balanced repertoire of emotions, like a, a more fuller expression of yourself too. Yeah. Um, even like I I don't want to drag too much stuff in here, but like so so even think of something like Bioshock Infinite, uh, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but I mean, I. I was really accepting of like a character like Elizabeth. In here, I am talking about how these Suntory girls make me want to puke. But <laughs> yeah. like but Elizabeth I, was awesome. But Elizabeth yeah. was great. Elizabeth was a great character. And you know, like I think it's because maybe there's more as facets to her character. But like one part of her character that I did enjoy was this kind of like her seeing the world and afresh, like exploring that world because. Here you are as Booker, and you you see the beauty of Columbia too, but you really can't you can't enjoy the beauty of Columbia like you you're part of the violence of Columbia, where where she kind of operates as like pr appreciating the beauty of Columbia too, uh, you, experiencing it with you for the first time too, and I thought that was really good. I enjoyed that quite a bit. So I don't know. I hear again, yeah. I want to save myself from being just this totally emotionally dead shut off. Uh, ma macho loving, I gotta shove my gun in your face and pull the trigger, guy. Yeah, I mean, maybe that was good because it provided a, a balance to the violence that was, let's just be honest, the violence, the violence that was Bioshock Infinite, a great mm -hmm. portion of it, was just outright violence. Um, so there was that aspect to it, too. I mean, and they, they didn't, I mean, part of the theme was itself, they did that the world itself is a lie. It's 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 a fabrication, right? It's, mm -hmm. Which is kind of again the storyline we love, uh, at least the one I'm, I find myself drawn to. Yeah, which um, it kind of kind of makes the story against Kitsch to a certain yeah. extent, right? Right. And but uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't object to you calling Elizabeth kind of kitschy. Like a little. I, I could see you know somebody coming in from the side and saying, well, Same. yeah, what about Elizabeth? Like, uh, and that's a character you do like, and couldn't I just E just as easily throw her in to kitsch. Uh, yeah. And I really do like Elizabeth too, but I don't know how I defend that. Especially, I mean, like one of the first scenes, one of the first scenes you have with her is when she's dancing there. Right. And you, I was like, wow, this is a great scene. Exactly. Uh, but right. We don't know anything about her yet. All we know is that she's kind of awesome. I mean, but I was, all, I was already willing to accept that. I was, I I was right on board there. So I, I guess maybe I, I just, I, I, I want to believe that part of the problem I'm having is why I'm gagging it. It's because there's just too much. But even yeah. that, I mean, like, the real problem isn't even that, is it? It's it, it's not even... It's it's just the, the idea that people... And I don't even have any evidence of this, but I just think that the, all they do is spend all day in one of these aspects, right? Mm. Like, I mean, that, that would be a real problem. It's like I the problem... Yeah. The, the problem is not, for example, My Little Pony. The problem is the My Little Pony fans, mm. right? I mean, it, it, or, or anime. The problem isn't anime. Uh, there's no problem there enjoying these emotions there. The, the problem is if you only enjoy those emotions there. Mm. I mean, like, as long as you're eating a balanced diet of, of, of all sorts of kind of feelings and emotions and, and, and seeing the whole world from different perspectives, there's just no reason in the world you can't enjoy I don't know, War and Peace, Crime and Punishment, and American Psycho, along with My Little Pony. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, I think that the best kind of person would be able to do that. Yeah. Um, he would find it in himself to, to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I, after reading these essays too, I kind of found myself sitting there at my living room table, staring at the TV, uh, and uh, thinking kind of, Maybe, maybe is it possible that little Piper Chan crying about Fukushima actually is a legitimate critique? That I mean, a legitimate critique. I mean, a critique that could have real world effect. Uh, it, that could actually cause the government to send some more dollars up there. They they could be doing some good. Could somebody be like looking at this and actually be? move to make real policy changes well i don't know what do i i if if that's true i i don't 
I don't, as I don't have it, it just, it feels like not that will never happen to me. Still makes me gag. It makes me gag. Yeah. It would, it would lessen it a little bit if I thought that was getting something done a little. It would still make me gag, but, but maybe I guess, again, that's part of the fact that the news <laughs> here. <laughs> part of me wants to say, why aren't you more emotionless robots? Like, I know. Uh, why can't right. you send the money without Piper Shop? I know. Right? Right, but but that, that, this that's, is kind of the same really thing, too. Like, I kind of want to say, like, just put Fukushima on the screen. Yeah. And and just just show it. Right? You know, Ark, I kinda wanna say things like, well, if you really think Fukushima is a problem, why don't you do something without putting little Piper Chan on the screen? Right? Like, uh it, you should be motivated to do that, shouldn't you? Right. I want I wanna get this kind of like rationally but, yeah, consistent. That's just not true, true right? Exactly. That's right. That's not how people are motivated. I know, right? And I guess I mean we, we I think we talked about this a little bit before. I mean, even like recently there's been the anniversaries of the atomic bombings were here and they have all sorts of shows about this. And it's really, really a big thing here. But, you know, e even on these shows where they, they, they show like old stories of like kam kam kamikaze pilots going off, um, leaving their wives to join the Tokotai and, and die, right? And I, those are, I don't know. I, I like watching those stories. I like history. I like that history. I like seeing it f shown on, in Japan. I like seeing how it's talked about in Japan. But even on those stories, when they pan back to the little, like, you know, 20-something, 30-something guests, yeah. these little, yeah. these actresses or, or whatever, <sighs> who are just too cute for school, right? And then they pan back, and here she is. She's got, like, tears streaming down her cheek because the husband was leaving the wife to join the Tokotai, like the, 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 the kamikaze. And I'm kind of like, I, I don't know. Maybe, is this my American machismo? I want, I want just respectful silence. I want, <laughs> stop crying. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I just feel like, my instinct is you're cheap. I know. You're cheap. How, I mean, like, I'll cry, but give me an hour first. <laughs> Maybe I'm emotionally dead, right? Like, like, I'll cry, but you better give me a good hour of right. leading up to that. This is the whole thing Salman gets into about like deep and shallow emotions, yeah, and right. like you're like, all of my emotions are deep ones. Come on, <laughs> yeah, right? Man. How dare you have a shallow emotion <laughs> or a shallow cry? Like, but I guess I I well, I can't anymore. I don't know. I'm I'm to this age where I, me too. I kind of I, I can't have a shallow cry. Me too. I, I, I can, kind of force I can it out myself. I can have shallow anger. Yeah. In fact, I do every day. Yeah, me is, too. Quite, quite but the shallow cry, never. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Never. And I, I do f find myself feeling disgusted by people who do. Yeah. And quite. It, it's, I don't know. I know, I know I'm wrong. I mean, I know there's nothing. What's the fundamental difference between me having a shallow anger and her having a shallow cry? Um, I mean, I guess the, the fundamental thing is both of us should really, maybe if there is a critique, it would be, well, I mean, you really even can't critique people from having shallow emotions because everybody has to have shallow emotions in their day, right? And you can't go a day without always having deep emotions. But I guess the best critique you could muster is, well, I mean, maybe you should look a little deeper into that. Yeah. But, you know, but you really can't tell them, you can't say no to me for my shallow anger or no to this 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 actress for her shallow cry um but oh, I, just, I, I, I hate the double exploitation there her shallow cry and then oh she's she's a girl so she's pure oh god, mm. oh, my god. oh tv is just manipulating you right down the court i know okay ah sorry sorry it's another <laughs> eruption of disgust i can't i know i mean i yeah I, you just find yourself telling yourself these things like well here she is crying she's getting lost in the moment where in my respectful silence i'm not only able to take the sadness but i'm also yeah. able to see the big picture which makes me such a yeah. rationally yeah. deeper person and how able strong to, you are how strong i am i'm able to bear it and, and understand the larger meaning in context because of my superior rationality yeah. uh <laughs> <laughs> you know like i i do kind of feel like you know i i was I kind of associate a kind of an emotional deadening, deadening to a, a kind of a goodness. I made too I much know. philosophy. I, know, I, know. I I found myself doing the same thing as I was thinking about different examples of kitsch that made me. Bleh. I I kind of wanted silence or nothing at all. Just it felt like the emotionality of it was ruining. It. 
Yeah. <laughs> Stop getting your messy emotions all over this good stuff. Yeah. This is really important. Don't be crying over this. <laughs> you don't cry baseball. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> So, I don't know. I, I just don't know what to say other than I, I know a lot of this is a lot of just me being raised a certain way, right? Mm. And there's no way I can defend my my disgust and hatred with a mm. lot of it. I mean, it, it, it just in the end, like just overall, it kind of, it just gives you this, these, these two essays give you a perspective that maybe you're the one with the extreme position. At least that's what it felt like to me. Like the fact that I, I wouldn't accept this at all, like zero level. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to listen to it at all, right? And, and that's what the real, that's, the, I mean, in a certain way, the message kind of comes down to what Kundera was saying in a, in a kind of way too, except he kind of got it a little bit mixed up there, maybe a little bit. Uh, like, yeah, you need to have a balanced kind of diet, there, mm -hmm. right? In the long run, right? Mm -hmm. You can't, just because like the second tier comes, as he says, it's not, that you can't blame them for having the second tier about how good they are because you can have a self-referential emotion. Yeah. But it, what, can, what can't happen I, I, I is never tell myself how good I am for anger. Yeah. Never, never, never. I never tell myself how great I am for being angry at stuff. Of yeah, course. Yeah, course <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah right? I mean, that can't be what's going wrong. What's going wrong is only that. Mm. That's what's going wrong. Yeah. yeah. I, so, yeah. I, I, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I mean... I want people to see different things and be moved by different things. I'm kind of like sitting here thinking like, well, if you're moved by this, you know, there's a lot of big problems going on. Where are your tears for those? Um, but again, it's maybe it's just a lot of outside frustrations, not really having to do with kitsch, yeah, not having yeah. to do with the sentimentality of the whole thing. Or the, the Japanese media or other media being un unable to connect people with the broader world, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, but that, then again, like 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 Solomon says, the sentimentality is not the problem here. It's the inability to connect to yeah. a larger world problem, or you know, what are you doing, weeping, you Nazis, when there's you know a Holocaust going on? But then I guess maybe the answer would be yeah, but we're doing that. But hey, <laughs> yeah, right. we planned that, man. It was yeah. all it was yeah. all part of the plan. Part of the plan. And nobody cares if the plan goes on schedule, right? Even if the plan is horrible. <laughs> The Joker. Uh, I had to. I had to do it. Mm. So, uh, well, do you have any anything more you'd like to say about these two essays? I mean, we didn't really get into a, a lot of the individual arguments. I think it's pretty. I mean, Solomon's pretty straightforward on each one. He attacks each one quite directly and tries to show how they don't really hold a lot of water. A lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of it comes down to like, well, the other emotions are the same. Yeah. So, what's your big deal about this one? Yeah. Uh, and then you're kind of like or stop oh, yeah. confusing the attack. Yeah, right? you're, you're not conf conflating an, an attack on art, good or bad art, on a, with an attack on emotion. Yeah, right? these are different arguments. Or stop conflating and uh, not being connected to the broader world with the sentiment itself. Yeah. You're conflating. You're making the wrong argument. You're attacking the wrong thing. A lot of it comes down to that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, definitely recommend. Definitely recommend them. Definitely, definitely recommend the book, especially those two essays. I enjoyed them very much. Um, and of course, Robert Solomon's great overall. So, do you have anything else you want to say? No. Okay. All right. I think I'm pretty good. Uh, we're pretty good then. So yeah. we're gonna go back to our paranoid macho fantasies, and we'll see you people sometime uh, later. All right. Bye.